G'day mate, Luke Ford here, and I'm talking with Menachem. Hi. Hey, and uh, Menachem, you grew up in Los Angeles. You grew up as an Orthodox Jew in Los Angeles. What did you like, what did you dislike about growing up as an Orthodox Jew in Los Angeles? So, Los Angeles is like the wild, wild west. A lot of people um, have came here to kind of do their own thing, because the system in the basically in the United States, was imported into the United, into Los Angeles, um, where certain things Los Angeles is behind in. Um, Baruch Hashem, we brought High Lifeline to Los Angeles. Um, we shouldn't have to go outside of Los Angeles to get certain resources within the Jewish community that I, I felt were behind in the times. Um, Baruch Hashem, Los Angeles is up to date with resources, and certain resources um, were not there. One thing I love about Los Angeles is, in Los Angeles, as it is kind of like Hollywood style, um, the Jews bring out the best, and we could we have an opportunity to do a Kiddush Hashem. Um, so there's many times where um, I go out with the group Achilles, as I'm blind now, so Achilles, and I ran into Jennifer Gardner, and we have an opportunity to do a Kiddush Hashem just because we meet somebody who may meet a Jew for the first time, a Torah observant, we all practice our orthodoxy differently, and we have a great opportunity to show um, non-Jews, how we are or legoim, a light onto others and to bring out the best and to capitalize on our practice of Judaism. We should not judge, we should not, Jews do not define Judaism. Right. And I think we have an opportunity to grow and um, we all have our choices that we can make. And there's a, a pretty rich community. I mean, there are mikvahs, there are kosher restaurants, there are yeshivas, there are a variety of Orthodox rabbis, there are many different paths you can take in Orthodox Judaism. So I guess one of the good things about Orthodox Judaism in Los Angeles is that there are a lot of choices. That is correct. Um, so logistically, um, we have the gamut. Um, there's a rabbi who says that modern Orthodoxy is pretty much centrist Orthodoxy. So... On Pico, um, there's a synagogue to the, um, I, in the middle, there's um, a Das Torah, and to the right of it, there's B'nai David Judea, which is a merger, it used to be a, um, a movie theater. So in LA, we make it into a positive and turn it into a shul, um, a Makam Torah, and it's to the right of a Das Torah, and to the left, we have Merkaz HaTorah, which is the center of Torah. And it's a beautiful place where lots of Torah learning goes on. And a Das Torah is a gathering. Yeah, and a Das Torah, is it, is it like the most right-wing synagogue in Los Angeles, in Pico Robertson? I would say? say definitely not. Um, recently at a das, das Torah banquet, um, there are certain members of the community who um, we were honoring. And a Das Torah is one of the unique Shoals, it has OU. Mm -hmm. um, we have, so it's OU is basically an Orthodox Union, um, and it's basically, I would call it Das Torah, the uniting, because United Orthodox Jewish Congregation, I think, is the a, a founding organization of the predecessors to the Orthodox Union. So we have Aguda Rabbanim, so that's like more, um, I would say, more to the right. Judaism, um, but we also have Orthodox Union. We have speakers from where I go to Das Torah that are religious Zionists. Mm -hmm. um, we have all walks come in there. I mean, I'm a jeans and a t-shirt fellow. Um, and I would say it's a very eclectic crowd. Um, and that's why I love it. Das Torah is a gathering of Torah. And it's not like you take a da a da a das Torah, like a letter, mm -hmm. a rabbi, we, we bring it all full, full circle. 
and it's a beautiful congregation. It's very warm and welcoming. Um, I would say recently, age 32, April 2017, I lost my eyesight to a, to a rare genetic condition called Leber's Hereditary Optic Neuropathy. And Did was, you know this was coming or did it just happen to you unexpectedly? Um, it happened pretty, uh, unexpectedly. Um, I, as far as I know, I'm the only person in the county of Los Angeles who has it. Wow. Um, I have the, a rare mutation. It's a 3460, a long pant size. And it's, it's, a, um, it's very unique. Um, it's it's uh, rare. It's hard to explain. It's basically like a snowy TV set back in the day, but we have a Torah value set and kind of like, so it's, it's like a TV set and we all have Torah values. Um, so basically I have more peripheral mm -hmm. than central. Um, and it's very r rare, so I would say it's, uh, it's basically more peripheral than central, so what's central to you is peripheral to others. Right. So keep dying the prize. Right. Now, did, did the, how long did it take for this to happen? Like, when did you first notice something was going wrong? Uh, I would say around February by April, and it, we basically... Um, I did in a one sitting at the at the lab. There's only about a few labs that test for this condition. Uh, got the results after Pesach. I was in the hospital right before Pesach. We did uh, on April 10th. Did the blood draw around April 3rd. Um, I got my results shortly after Pesach. It's basically five weeks. We all noticed symptoms. Um, and, and how how old were you at this time? 32. And what were you doing for work? prior to becoming blind? I was working as an order manager at Western Kosher. Hmm. And uh, I can't imagine you were able to continue in that line of work after becoming blind? I would say that is correct. However, um, the Jewish community um, was um, very assisting in, uh, and in every way that they can. Um, I'm going to say, while I am blind, uh, um, um, it's very difficult for someone who is not blind to understand what it's like to be blind. I recently found out my blood type is B positive. Um, it's not just a blood type, as I like to say. And um, some people, um, when they lose a family member, they grieve. Um, and I was given advice by someone who I was connected to and really is helpful to a lot of people, um, and I would say is a very great person and influential, um, that what they did is they created a, a quote book. And I have a lot of inspirational quotes. And mine is, be positive, it's not just a blood type, so kind of, I don't go looking for problems. So kind of think about it, if, if, the goal is to cross the street. Um, I could use a cane, mm -hmm. and I could put AirPods in. So I'm tuning out the sound. I'm feeling the street, and I can cross the street with AirPods in and just feel the street. Or I could do some other things, like, uh, you know, just to, if the, bat, the goal is to hit the baseball, and the bat hits the baseball, and I could hit a baseball, and all I have to do is swing the bat so I can hit a baseball. If the, so it's just don't go looking for the problems and uh, so are you independent are you living on your own um, I am living alone Baruch Hashem with the great assistance of this community um, there's a lot of um, kind of looking at like this blind people it's very difficult for us to find work um, most of us live under the poverty line about 90% of us worldwide um, 70 to 90 percent of in America um, basically are unemployed or don't have enough work so most of us are on Social Security SSI um, some people who Baruch Hashem had the opportunity because of the Jewish community or the to have it work for over 10 years receive SSDI like myself Social Security disability insurance and it's very rewarding um, when we keep our, you know, commitments to each other, and 
deliver. So yes, it is independent as I can be except when it requires I, I said I do do stuff differently and I try and be as perspicacious um, as I can, which is a unique perception of facts and details. Now, how did your life change after getting this diagnosis and after becoming blind? Drastically, um, in a word. Um, blindness, um, the great um, rabbinic sage, Zechor Sadiq Lurach Rav Moshe Feinstein, defined it as um, isolating in his responsa of is a guide dog allowed into show? Hmm. Um, it's isolating. So imagine only seeing um, black, like darkness. Mm -hmm. um, and also, there's a, there's a dog from Egypt. It uh, doesn't bark. A man's best friend is a dog. When the Jews left uh, Mitzrayim, Egypt, the dogs didn't bark. And this dog that is native of Egypt, is, uh, find a pure breed of it, I don't remember the name, doesn't bark. So it is isolating, and um, I think it's very important to have support. How did your friends react to you going blind? Did they, did they stay with you, or were they scared by it, or how did they react? I would say they, they don't know what to do. However, there's all these different forms of support. Um, some people are try and use their what they can do. We'll call it their means, which is money. Some people have different resources, so they may know somebody who knows somebody um, who is blind, um, or somebody who may know something about technology, or could get you to a very good doctor. Um, but we should, if we express concern about others, they will express, and we should try to not criticize, condemn, or critique, or not judge somebody who is not in each other's time. So I do try and do a lot of uh, Torah learning. So sometimes if we have time, we should use it for the right practices. Um, and in Vayikra, Leviticus, uh, Yudtes, Pasuk Yudalad, 1914, do not mislead somebody. So sometimes stuff happens um, at different things and you can trace it back like what does it mean to you so we got to do what's best for you and um, I think the community came together and raised some money for you I think about hundred thousand dollars so did that help your life it did um, it you know sometimes it's difficult to know what's going on in somebody's life and we got to do what protect so Baruch Hashem thank God um, the community made it possible for me to have a roof over my head um, and uh, we just got to be paired with the right people. And I would say some people are the best. You know, like if you get a little scared, you'll wear a mask like, and be a little creepy like, you know, Jason. But we just got to protect each other. And sometimes you get a little influential and you say, I need that. And we don't, it could all be taken away in a heartbeat, just like I lost my eyesight in about five weeks. So, like, a lot can go missing. And did you get the money, all the money that was raised for you? That's a difficult question to answer. I would say maybe. I mean, Baruch Hashem, the community made it possible for me to have a roof over my head. But, you know, stuff got a little browned out. And um, it So got some people have taken advantage. Some people have taken advantage of your blind status to, to put their hands on money which was raised for you. Definitely, yes, unequivocal. I mean, if you're influential and come from a family that your last name may be, like, I don't know, like Trump or Biden, all of a sudden, okay, so we got to protect you. And circling back, you know, your past, oh, that's in the past. I'm like, however, if we have a problem and the problem is never addressed, just like we, we need help, so... Um, if there's a problem in Menachem needs to see something, sometimes we make it possible. This is a community that we will make it possible for Menachem to see an actress. From Jennifer, Jennifer Garner to Sarah Marie Hutchinson, or like there's Legend of the Phoenix. Right, right. And did you receive at least half of the funds that were raised for you? No. 
Did you receive 80% of the funds that were raised for you? I don't think so. I would say they were, it was going to be administered by an accountant and an, or a lawyer or, and I don't know where the money went. Um, it definitely didn't go to me as it was supposed to benefit me directly. And I did not receive direct benefit. I did, Baruch Hashem, get a roof over my head, thank God, with the great help of an influential members of our community and family, um, of the Jews, and I'm sure there's some other people that did all they could to help. We have all these different forms of support. And sometimes the Gemara and Sanhedrin says, Shtika we just be quiet, but that doesn't make problems go away. So I was, I was trying to circle back to this, that like, if you, how do you take corrective measures? By acknowledging, the Rambam said, if we don't have a oh moment, oh, I didn't realize I said that when I was newly blind, I got a lot of insensitive comments, like, is Menachem Jewish? And I'm like, well, Yitzchak lost his eyesight to smoke. Yes, there are other Shita's opinions. But that was a question someone was asked of me in front of my parents. And we're like, well, L.A. joined. So the best thing, all questions are coming from a good place. So we have to just answer questions. And no means no. <laughs> so, I mean, for most of us, becoming blind is just an unfathomable ordeal to go through. What are the, what are the greatest sources of joy in your life today? Because I know for, for many of us, just becoming blind, we just we can't imagine where you would find joy after that. Um, spending time with friends is one. Um, sometimes we just dial in like a piper would and go all beast mode because I'm a social beast. Um, if we listen and we'll learn what the issues are, we can actually best address it. So I like to learn. Um, my favorite app is, or way to learn, is on YU Torah. Um, I like to go on long walks, which is like I um, recently did the uh, LA Half Marathon, beginning at Dodger Stadium where Frank McCourt. Um, we love the parking lots, still will utilize those. I did a half marathon. Long walks on the beach is a fun one. Um, I like to hit baseball. Sometimes, you know, there's a little lime and go on a ride and we can do a bird and all confet the sharim, or we can do all confet firehawks because the Kishohavet sends chesed girls and boys, and we go out and spend quality time. So hitting baseballs, doing a little driving, uh, let them do the stabilization, and also Baruch Hashem, there's a high school called Yeshiva University of Los Angeles that recently got united uh, with the boys and girls school back together. And I like to call them the God God Gods because they have panthers. How on earth do you drive when you're blind? What's central to you is peripheral to others. So if you just don't think that there's going to be something in front of you, looking for the positive, if the goal is to cross the street, okay. and I do stuff differently, just think about it. And sometimes you need a little guidance. So if you tune stuff out, you just focus on the pavement. So if you just put in AirPods and you just think, ooh, I'm going to be so smitten, and I'm going to cross the street, just think about it. The goal is to cross the street. Like, why did Menachem cross the street? To, to get showered with, with, with love and stuff like that. There's a lot of, uh, you know, there's stuff called uh, sugar, salt, and pepper. And so when you blend them together, that's all, you just got to think of the positive. The goal is to cross the street, and I learned how to do this. I went to school to do everything from change a diaper, to cross the street, to be, read Braille, to you, you, you name what I learned to do again. Um, where does your eyesight go? Hmm. It's your memory. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay, let's just leave it there for right now.